y'all. I literally debated whether or not I was going to record any of this at all or just put it in a vlog or show you guys anything. I barely said anything on social media about it. But, yeah. This Lash Beauty has been in a hospital for the past. What is today? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Monday, Tuesday. Well, today's Wednesday. So four days, but I'm leaving today. Praise the Lord. Um, short story. I had a kidney stone. It was about one centimeter. It's not my first time having them, but it tore your girl up. So pain was on a trillion. Like I'm sorry, I look crazy. You know, when you be in a hospital, you don't to get to do like your regular stuff. But I'm leaving today, so I'll be able to do all my regular stuff, as far as like my face and yeah. I can't wait to be home and eat some real food. I'm starting to gain my appetite back. But I had a sitting kidney stone; it was one centimeter big, and now I get to go home today. I had surgery to get it out, and now I have a stent in my bladder to keep it wide to make sure it's flowing and all this stuff. So I'm not in, you know, pain. I'm just uncomfortable right now. I'm not my full self. But I wanted to check in and tell you guys that I'll probably sit down and do a story time about that time I had to go to the emergency room. <laughs> so this clip will probably be in there, probably in the beginning. Hospital robe and all. Face looking crazy at all. Yay. Ugly you look in the morning without your scabars and bonnets. Mm. Yeah, y'all not see it all. That look crazy. <laughs> I look crazy. But I'm ready to go. Look at the pillow, Lord Jesus. It's time to go. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Story time. Take one. We're gonna get real, real comfortable and we're gonna get into it. You know, we're gonna sit down and unwind. I mean, it's five o'clock somewhere. I don't know what time it is here, but it's like midday, but it's five o'clock somewhere. So that's neither here nor there. It's all your girl is coming in here with the bonnet. I'm comfortable. I don't, yeah. I have to get my hair done. I'm not gonna come over here and have stepping. So, you know, just bonnet it is, cause bonnet, okay? Just come as you are. That's what the, that's what the saints say. But we're gonna go ahead and have a nice, Bellini, oh my gosh, if you guys have a local Audi or Audi in your area, please go and get you this Bellini. It is so good. It's, it's delicious, delicioso. But I already have me here a pre-poured glass out of my Sweet Retreat 2021 glass, and we're going to go ahead and get it talking. But let me get a little sip. Shh, not while I'm sipping. Ooh, ooh. thirsty aren't you <laughs> anyways <laughs> whoo as i was saying as you guys seen in the clip before you see me in the actual hospital and loki i didn't want to talk about it i didn't want to talk about it during that time because i was already going through the emotion and the pain so i was like you know what i am going to record this because i i knew, knew i was gonna be gone I had amped y'all up about the sweet retreat. I was amped up about the sweet retreat, enjoy myself at the sweet retreat. But unfortunately, after all that fun, 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 hospital, 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 pain, 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 pain. It was not pleasant. It was very, 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 very painful. But let's talk and let's get into it. As I said before in the actual clip at me in the hospital, I have had kidney stones before. This was my third kidney stone, kidney stone. And if you don't know what a kidney stone is, a kidney stone is a very, 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 it's like, it's so small. It's, it's smaller than a grain of rice. It's so tiny, but it's so painful. It's so, uh, <laughs> it's very, very tiny. It gets trapped in your actual, for me, this one was in my um, bladder tube, which is near my kidney. And it forms in your kidney, but when it, when it tries to release itself, it goes through your bladder. And being that the bladder is small and depending on the, the way the stone is, like if you ever Google like how they look, they're like really prickly. So just imagine like your kid, your bladder, 
and this kidney stone going through your bladder and this very, very prickly thing trying to get out of your very tiny bladder. It honestly feels like somebody is stabbing you, but consistently, like it didn't, it, it doesn't feel like a, a poke and stop. You know, I've never been stabbed. So I really, if I had to compare it to something, it, it feels like that. I've had five children, guys, five, all natural, all no epidural, just straight in there pushing like, I don't know how I did that. I, I was more scared of the needle than anything, but anyways. I've had five children and that pain alone, the kidney stone is right up under labor delivery. And um, it's, it's really close. It's really close. In fact, our good friends Val and Bob, Bob had from The Real Nails, go watch their channel. You will love their content. He had an actual, <laughs> an actual video on their channel about him having the kidney stones. And I really do feel like for men, it's worse. I feel like, I don't know why, I, I do I do feel like it's more worse nothing I just y'all can't handle the pain at all <laughs> so I understand like when men get it uh, yeah they probably feel like they're dying I I can, I can compare oh yeah because I feel like I was done I did thank you Jesus but I didn't anyways so like I was saying, I've had them before, but just coincidentally, every time after I have had them, it was after I had a child. So every time I had them, and this is why going to a doctor is important because now your girl got a whole urologist and all this stuff like that. So when I had the first one, I had it after having Mariah. Um, if you guys know, I was a teen parent. So I had Mariah when I was 17 years old. I was pregnant at 16, had her at 17. So after me having her, um, I think she was about, yeah, about five months. And then I ended up having this really, really like crazy pain. And long story short, it ended up being a kidney stone. But that pain was so unbearable. Like I was on the floor in my mama's car crying like I need to get to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, I barely could like walk myself in the hospital. I was like, I am about <laughs> to pass out or die. And lo and behold, after they took that little urine sample, it was a kidney stone. But that, that kidney stone, I, I passed. And like I said, it was after me having a child. The second time I had a kidney stone was after I had William. And he was a couple months old. And immediately I knew what it was because I had already experienced this a couple of years, years, <laughs> years before. Mind you, these are gaps, gaps. Mariah is 14, William is eight. So I think Mariah, it was probably about a good, eight year difference in age seven to eight year in, in year difference between me having the first initial kidney stone but once again i went to the hospital and i was able to pass it on my own this is why i made a mistake i should have went to the urologist after number two why did i not go to the urologist i don't know i have no idea because i still had insurance i had state government insurance i don't know i don't know go to the doctor go to the doctor don't Put it on hold. Make sure you guys are going to see your p, p your primary care <laughs> pediatrician. <laughs> Make sure you're going to see your primary care doctors. Make sure you're going to go see any specialist that you need. Ch chiropractor. Anthony's done with his chiropractor, y'all. I'm so happy, but he still goes once a month. But yeah, uh, he's been doing so good with his neck. But anyways, um, yeah, just go to the doctor. So this incident, um, when I initially start feeling the pain, I start feeling like. Uh, I felt like I had held my bladder. You ever held your bladder too long and get that pain? Like, oh, you know, when you pee, it'll go, it'll pass. So I felt like that. So it didn't really like warn me like, oh, it's a kidney stone. And then I was still on a high for my trip. Like, oh, no, you know, it's not that. It cannot be that. So lo and behold, <laughs> the pain came back and it was like, I ended up taking some Excedrin and it did like, subdue the pain but it didn't eliminate the pain i was still tolerating my pain the pain ended up going away but unfortunately <laughs> when it came back it came with a vengeance a vengeance so i told anthony i said we have to go to the hospital right now right now so i ended up going to the hospital and i already you know experienced this before so they already knew what it was it just so happened that this hospital was very, very slow. Very, very, very slow. So I'm like, Lord, be with me. And I'm sitting in the waiting room. At this moment in time, 
um, my husband him calling like my family and friends and let them know like what's going on with me. I'm getting phone calls, text messages, and then I end up getting a phone call from my in-laws and they started a prayer line for me. Thank you so much. My uh, mother-in-law, my father-in-law, and my, uh, my husband's um, aunts, they prayed for me. And during that time as they're praying, the pain is just really, really bad. Like it was bad. And I, I, like I said, I have kids five times and I pushed them out. I cursed people out, but I pushed them out. Like, like it was nothing, but this pain was so 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 bad so i'm sitting there in tears just waiting to get admitted because i know that i needed to get admitted so that way they can give me um the medicine through my iv because normally when you get the medicine through your iv you feel good you feel you you feel great <laughs> you just feel way better like you feel way better so while i'm in the waiting room in the triage the nurse there she gave me something i don't know the name of the medicine and i'm sorry that i don't know the name of medicine but she gave me something it didn't work this is how much pain I was in. It did not work. So eventually, I want to say about a good 20 minutes passed and I finally got called into um, a room and the doctor finally came in. Wasn't a urologist, I think it's just like a regular emergency doctor. She finally came in and I'm just like, mm, bundled up, looking real cute, but bundled up in a ball and pain and i'm explaining to her she's like on a scale of one to ten what is your pain i said i have a high tolerance for pain but honestly it's probably a 9.5 so i knew that <laughs> me being that 9.5 and she could see it in my body like i wasn't having any relief in pain at all so she was like yeah we're gonna get a urologist here for you because i'm pretty sure you have a kidney stone after them running their own test but we just need to look into you know do their own research so of course um she's like just stating from your pain that you're in i'm going to give you morphine <laughs> your girl ain't never had morphine in her life okay i never had ever i never had anything other than probably whatever they give you in the iv for his pain relief, etc. But I never have morphine in my life. So she's like, you know, the, <laughs> you're gonna be great. So I'm like, okay, my mind. I'm like, I just need drugs that's gonna make me feel better. I don't care what it was or what. I just needed to feel better. I just wanted the pain to stop. Oh, <sighs> you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. So the nurse came in. She was like, have you ever had it before? Very nice nurse. I said, no, I never had it before. She was like, okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit because this is about to be an experience. <laughs> And it was an experience so i was like okay no problem so she i just wanted to pay to go over she proceeded to give me the morphine through my iv and in the midst of her giving it to me giving me the morphine she dropped it thank god she did thank god she did so i only got a little bit of morphine a little bit of morphine so she asked me say are you feeling anything i was like no i'm feeling nothing I didn't feel nothing at all for about a good, probably about 20 seconds. 21.00 seconds, my whole body from my head down had like this rush of fire hit my entire body. My entire body proceeded to get hot. I was like, wait a minute, people like this drug? People like to abuse, how? I, I'm a kind of person that I like to have control over my body. I like to be in control of all kind of aspects. I don't want nobody controlling me. No, I need to be in control of self, okay? That's important to me, okay? And I didn't feel like I had any control and I felt like I was not on earth. Like I really felt like I was floating. Like I was not here and my body was hot. The pain was gone though. Mm. The pain did go away. It went away and I felt so, so, so much better. But because of everything that happened, they ran the test, I even had the x-ray. And they realized that I had a one centimeter size, one centimeter, one centimeter. The bladder ain't but so big, y'all. The bladder is not big. One centimeter in size of a actual kidney stone. It was entirely too big to pass. So I needed to get it surgically removed from my actual, <laughs> my bladder so that way I can be out of pain. So this is where things kind of went bad for your girl. Um, the first urologist came in and she was like, um, your kidneys look infected. So even if I were to go and administrate the, to do the surgery for you, you would die pretty much. That's all I heard. She didn't say that. <laughs> she said, you're going to go into shock. But you know, for us, I heard I'm going to die. I don't want the surgery. So what else can we do? 
So the next best thing was to put a urinal stint in the bladder so that way I can open my bladder and allow the kidney stone to try to come through. And I understand that when you go into the doctors and or anybody, when you're getting any procedure done, they have to tell you the worst. I wish they would not tell you the worst and they would come in there a little bit more calmer when they explain these things to you because your girl was already scared. Due to COVID and everything that's happening in the world, you cannot have anybody in the hospital with you. So my husband had to leave me in the hospital and go back home and you know make sure the kids were taken care of. So I'm in the hospital by myself. I've never been in the hospital without my mama or my husband. So I'm freaking out even more because now they're talking about surgery and about how I can go into shock. So I'm already like, I really was like in pain. Pain was kind of eased during that time after they gave me the first shot of morphine, but I was still nervous and scared. And like, I was, I wasn't, yeah. I definitely called out to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and asked him to give me a peace of mind and allow everything to go in a way that is going to be beneficial to me, but also safe. So she's explaining these things to me about the urinal stent and, you know, how I wouldn't be able to get it done that night. I would have to wait until the morning to get the procedure done. So after I believe it was six o'clock, um, I would not be, I would be pretty much on a, uh, no, no food. So I said, okay, that's fine. I don't care, you know, whatever. At that moment in time, it was pretty late in the evening. It was almost time for them to pretty much not let me eat anyways and go on with the day as far as going on for me to get a surgery the next morning where the urinal stent put it to my body because I she couldn't remove it because it was the way the kidney stone was affecting my kidney. It was not looking good. So I don't know who prayed for me and who covered me, but thank you for your prayers because... Throughout the night, I was in pain, but like I said, I have a very, very tolerance of pain. So the morphine did work, but you can't have morphine every two hours. You cannot, you probably would die. And honestly, I wouldn't want it every two hours. So it was a mixture for me of getting morphine and Percocets put into my body. Probably every four to six hours, I was on a rotation because I couldn't get the surgery until the next morning. This is like 6 p.m. So I couldn't get the surgery until I think she's still like 11 something around that time they don't really give you an exact time they just tell you you know you're admitted to the hospital you won't be getting the surgery until tomorrow but right now you cannot eat whatever so i'm like oh my god so i'm just in pain in pain i'm like i just want to not be in pain and i don't i didn't want to feel like that anymore but i just had to muster through and keep pushing like i knew that uh, there was nothing that they could do for me because the way my the state of my kidney but i also think i needed to have that time because when i tell you everything did a, a 180 my body did a whole 180 i was so thankful so 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 thankful so the next day i had a different urologist come in he was a guy he was very nice and he ended up doing my surgery very guy very very nice guy i don't know his name but now he's my urologist yay but anyways um i ended up um Come, he ended up coming in the next morning and overnight you guys I was it was it was hard it, it was very hard like I was crying in tears because of the pain pain the pain was just like I said it was horrible like I, contractions stop kidney stone pain does not stop it's very consistent that's one thing I was like you know kidney stones you get a break I mean kidney stones contractions you get a break you get a moment to where the contraction subdues and then you're able to relax your uterus your uterus is relaxing you're not in pain but the kidney stone pain is very consistent very 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 consistent it doesn't stop at all let me get another sip but it was just it was up there and it was stuck the pain was up and it was stuck that's all i can get but the very next day i had a urologist come in he came in around like nine o'clock in the morning and he gave me the best news because they ended up doing some more tests but he gave me the best news anybody could give me at that moment in time. He was like, okay, we're gonna do your surgery and we're going to remove the kidney stone. And I was like, hallelujah, mm, thank you. I was so excited. Like I was like, I don't know what happened or what changed. I didn't care neither. Only I wanted to know was that he was actually going to get the thing that was causing me pain out of my body. I was just so relieved. But once again, I couldn't get the surgery that day. So I still had to go another night on between Percocets and morphine every four or six hours until the next day. 
So I was like, God, I, whatever. And then I couldn't eat again after 6, 6 p.m. But I didn't care. I didn't care. I was like, I called my mama. I called my husband. I called everybody, all my friends. And I said, listen, I'm going to get surgery tomorrow. I even sent a couple of you guys messages to let y'all know to pray for your girl and cover your girl in prayer because I'm going to get surgery tomorrow. So I ended up the very next day. And I think I'm kind of rushing. I'm trying not to rush it. But he did, when he explained to me, he did explain the works, like, you know, um, first of all, when you hear surgery, you, you think about like getting cut. So this surgery was actually not a cut surgery. That's why I kind of call it a minor surgery, but it's still surgery because I still had to be put to sleep. Great nap. I still had to be put to sleep and I still ended up, they end up going through my, my purse. <laughs> they end up going through my purse or whatever to actually perform the surgery, but they didn't cut me on the outside at all. This was all done um, through a camera and um, ultrasound. They moved it that way. That's how this procedure was completed. You can look up it on YouTube to see exactly how this whole thing is done. I forgot the name of it. If I, if I remember the name of it, I will link it. In fact, I'm gonna link a video in the description box of a, the procedure getting done. It is a little graphic, so if you ain't, you know, 18 and older, don't click on the video. Just, just don't because you're gonna see things and body parts and yeah. Anyways, and shout out to my um, you know, my waxologist because your girl when she would get a procedure, she was fresh, baby. I was like, yes. At least when you go down there, it's cute or whatever. But no, no. that's neither here nor there. But so I had to go through another night, like I was saying, a pain, not being there alone. And not having anybody there but me and the good Lord and people that called and checked in on me, those kind of things. But other than that, it was just me and I was very, very scared. And like I said, it was her in the pain. So finally the next morning, they came in bright early in the morning, thank you Jesus, it was like seven o'clock in the morning. And they were like, yeah, you, you, um, you get ready to go in. Um, I was like, thank you Jesus. All I cared about was having the surgery. I have had um, anesthesia where I was put to sleep before because I had a tube ligation. So after that, I um, my throat was very, very sore because they put a tube to keep your airways open, whatever. So being that my tube, my airway was open, that, that hurts. Like, I knew that I was going to be sore from that, at least coming back, right? So I went in there and I was in pain. And y'all know what I did? Hmm. <laughs> The anesthesiologist came up in there and I was like, yeah, ma'am, I'm in pain. And I know that we have to wait a couple of, you know, minutes here before you can administrate me anything. But is there anything you could do right now for me? Because I'm in pain right now. So she was like, um, I can't really give you a lot, but I want to give you a little bit. I said, that's all I need. I need just a little bit, a little bit of whatever these drugs y'all put in me to put me to sleep. So lo and behold, they came in and they, um, right when I was in the room on this, like getting on the table, moving from the table. No, before I got moved into the room, table, she gave me a little bit of my IV. Right in the day, I didn't care what they was doing because I was really like no longer in pain. Pain. I knew from that moment on that I was not going to be anybody's pain no more, no matter what. I was completely out of the I'm in pain phase forever <laughs> until they get this procedure done so oh excuse me so um we went into the um I'm trying to make sure i'm saying this all right i'm sorry this is so long but i mean it was days i was in the hospital for like four days so it's a long story um she ended up um they ended up you know doing prepping me etc and then they administrated the um the anesthesia in my arm Y'all, I don't even remember when they count down. Cause no when you get an anesthesia, they count down five, four, three, two, one. I don't even remember none of that. All I remember is that I woke up. Um, I was in a different area than when I began, and I knew, but I didn't have no more kidney stone. Mm. To God be the glory for the things that He has done. I did have a urinal stent still placed in my bladder because I needed to keep my bladder my bladder open to allow not the kidney stone because the kidney stone was completely removed. And y'all, this is a good thing. He was like, your kidney stone has been removed. Your kidneys are perfect. 
There's nothing wrong with your kidneys. Sometimes they got to go in, honey. And thank you, Jesus. He did go in because he seen my kidneys were perfect. He said, there's nothing wrong with your kidneys. You're in good health. Everything worked out in a great way. And I'm like, God, I just... <laughs> After the days of being in pain and having the surgery finally done, I was just so, so thankful that everything was done. I was out of the pain phase and I knew I was about to get ready to go home because being in the hospital sucks. Like it's, you get this horrible food. Sorry, hospital food ain't lit. No, you get this uncomfortable bed <clears throat> and then we're still in the pandemic. So I'm like, here we go. I even got tested for COVID twice when I was in the hospital. I was like, bruh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go home. Home. I was ready to go home. But I got um, released from the hospital. Anthony came and got me. My mama came and got me too. And when I came home, my grandma was here with me. Everyone came here to help me out. Um, the bladder was stent. Unfortunately, I was. it was up to me to remove, remove it. Uh, they told me to remove it in a week. Uh, I was released from the hospital on Tuesday um your girl no wednesday excuse me my birthday was actually that saturday the 6th and um i didn't want to experience my birthday after coming home from the hospital with the bladder stent in me a urinal stent so i removed it i had it already intended in my mind that i was gonna remove it plus the doctor was like because the way it is it's like having a tampon down there so you're going, most women, they, they accidentally pull it out. So y'all don't do this. Don't do not Don't be like me. Do not go to YouTube watching YouTube videos of these things because it freaked me out of having to take the bladder or stent out. And if you watch the real deals vlog, <laughs> Bobby freaked me out. Cause he was like, uh -uh. he had to go in and go get it taken out. So I was like, I'm not going in to get this taken out. I, I'm just at this moment in time, I, I don't have no pain. I don't have to keep these stones. And you know what? I just don't want to have to go in to go get something else done. I'm like, I'm gonna pull it out. I'm a G. I got this. I got this. So of course, <laughs> read your instructions, people. Read them. So I went, I woke up that morning and I had every intention of taking it, taking it out. I'm going to insert, not mine, a picture here of what it is. Don't be alarmed, okay? But this, I'm gonna put, you're gonna see it. It's gonna pop up now. Yeah, so you have to pull that out of your bladder, okay? So it's very, very long, it's kind of thick. So I already seen the pictures and everything and I seen people pulling it out themselves and it, the videos just wasn't pleasant. So I already was freaked out, but I was like, I knew I needed to do this and I knew I wanted to have my birthday. I mean, I had just came from the hospital. I didn't want my birthday to be, you know, miserable. <laughs> I didn't want it to be to where um, I just had surgery and I didn't get to enjoy some of my birthday and I had to take an additional week off from work as well. So I was like, yeah, I don't want to, um, be miserable. I just did not want to be miserable. So I woke up probably four o'clock that morning. I went to the bathroom and your girl pulled it out like a G. Everything went well. It was really more in my head than anything, or it could be because I was on pain medicines, etc. before. Hey, can y'all close the door? Thank you. So, um, excuse me, my children, they're getting up and, you know, kids, they're being kids. It's the weekend for us, so they're having a, a grand on time because they don't have any school. Um, I got a three-day weekend and I didn't. Kind of jelly, kind of jelly. Anyway, so, um, like I was saying, I pulled it out and it was nothing, but I should have read my um instructions because it does tell you and i end up googling this when you pull it out afterwards um between the time you pull it out and within i think it was like two hours or something like that you're gonna feel like you're having a kidney stone but it's not a kidney stone take your pain medicines and your pain should subdue if it does not subdue then you need to go back to the emergency room because i really felt like i was having another kidney stone I was literally in fetal position on my bed, crying to my husband and the dear Lord himself and saying, God, I cannot go through this pain anymore. What is it that I can do to not be in this pain because I can't endure it any anymore? Please let the pain go away. And that lasted for about a good hour, about an hour of me being in pain, felt like I had the kidneys going to stare, scare again, and then I ended up being perfectly fine. So after that, March 6th, your girl was on her way to being healed and, you know, getting herself back together. So, then I went back to my regular day of life. I went back to work. 
everything went back as pretty much as normal. But yeah, I ended up taking some time away. We did, We have. I have videos for you guys, so don't panic. I'm gonna upload this one today. I really wanted to upload three videos last week, but work was so crazy last week, I could not do it, y'all, sorry. I wanted to upload some other stuff, but I do have videos for you guys, so, you know, I have two more videos that are already ready and set for you guys to go, but they'll be up next week, probably Monday, Wednesday, or Monday and Friday. So I'm going to get back to recording Y'all just bear with me. Y'all, uh, I want to give a special, special thanks to everyone that had came to call, text me, every person that knew what was going on. Because some people, y'all are like family to me. And I did tell you exactly what's going on. Everyone that called and texted me, shout out to Chelsea from the Two Become One. She actually caught, popped up. We popped up to each other's house. She popped up to the house. We sat down. She came to make sure that I was okay. She checked on me. And it was my birthday. She brought me a beautiful gift. And she made, she just, that felt good knowing that, you know, I had someone come and check it on me and like making sure that I was okay outside of my family. So I appreciated every single person. Lachey, she also called and texted me, making sure that I was okay. Thank you so much. I can go down a list of names of people. I just had a whole bunch of people that showed me love, prayed for me and covered me. And I'm just so so, so, so thankful for each and every single one of you guys. It meant so much to know that. Even though I was going through pain, even though I was going through a storm, I had a covering. I had a tribe of people that was behind me that were making sure that I was okay. Val and Bob, who me and Bob was talking back and forth a little bit about it because he had already experienced this, um, experienced this before. So, yeah, it was just so many of you guys. I'm thankful. I'm really, really thankful for every single one of you guys. So that is pretty much why your girl was gone and why I took a break from YouTube because I had to get myself together. Yes, now I have a, I have a primary care. I haven't had a primary care in a long time. Don't judge me. I have a primary care doctor now and I also have a urologist, which I haven't seen and making sure to see why I'm even getting the kidney stones because I'm young. I mean, your girl just turned 32 and I have a very, 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 very clean diet. Like, Oh, there I drink gallons of water a day. I eat healthy. I only thing I did eliminate um just from talking to the doctor. Um, I don't do dairy milk as much anymore, and I don't do soda at all. No soda. I mean I wasn't drinking soda like that anyways, but I felt as though what hyping the kidney stone was me having a coke. So that was the last coke your girl had. That was it that was it even with um alcohol it took me a while before i even started drinking back alcohol but i needed it lately a lot lately so i was like oh my gosh i yeah yeah just if i could recommend anything to anybody go see your doctors all of them urologists gynecologists dental vision go see them all that's what we're paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for insurance for because i pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars of insurance why not use the insurance that I'm paying for? Yeah, I'm using it, all of it, all of it. Y'all gonna see me going into doctors like crazy. Y'all probably see me, but yeah. I am doing everything that I can do to be better. I am better. I really did miss you guys. I mean, I love vlogging. I love my community here. I love the family and the friends that we have created through vlogging, through YouTube. So that's pretty much it. I'm sorry this was entirely long because I'm looking at the thing right now. This says 31 minutes, probably 32. But I appreciate you if you lasted this entire time because that was long. If you said 32 minutes, you're the real MVP. You're the real MVP. Make sure you guys follow your girl on Instagram because I do actually have a giveaway that I am going to be doing. Um, Actually, I'm probably going to do it on Wednesday on Instagram. But it's going to be on Instagram. I'm going to pick one, two, two, maybe three. I'm going to probably pick two or three people to win a prize. I'm not gonna tell you what the prize is, but just know that it's gonna be supporting a black um, a black business. And I'm excited to be able to do this. So look out, follow your girl on Instagram. It's gonna be very, very, very easy. It's gonna be so simple. I mean, all you gotta do is really follow your girl on Instagram. And if you, it's gonna be easy. Just follow your girl on TT Party 6 on Instagram. I mean, we hit a thousand over there. I'm so excited. Like, eh. I hit a thousand Instagram followers 
I mean, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I'm always active on that, which is probably why I hit it so fast. But I hit a thousand over Instagram. That's something to celebrate. Um, I turned 32 years old. Yeah, Anthony turned 30, 32, 34. The kids are doing great. We're all doing great. We're, we're great. We're doing great. So, like I said, it's already long. Thank you for watching. If you watched it in its entirety, make sure you guys pick up this Bellini. Go get the Bellini from Aldi. It's lit. It's lit. Have you a glass? It's great for the morning. It's great for nights, nice, hot days because we're getting into that weather when it's going to be hot and sunny. Get you a glass. And if you would like a custom glass, I'll link my plug right here because this is a custom glass. A custom glass, honey. Yes, you just get into it. Mm, mm, mm. But yeah, anyways, from my party to your party, make sure you like, comment, tell a friend about Teacher Party 6. Good night, world. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>